The Aorus Aquis Caliber 400, the in-house movement that was recently released from this independent Swiss brand, that's the subject of today's video. I've had Aorus USA reach out to me and they wanted to send me this watch to try out, to review, to film for 30 days. And today I'm gonna to be sharing my unfiltered, unbiased, no BS opinions and share with you guys uh, the results of the accuracy of the power reserve test. I'm not being paid by Oris. I'm not getting a free watch. I'm not benefiting other than getting access to a really exciting watch that I have personal interest in. So uh, no, this is going to be just a no BS review. Oris USA, <laughs> I don't know if they're going to work with me again. They might not like what I have to say in this video. And I'm sure a lot of you guys will not like what I have to say in this video, but you know what? That is, uh, that's just the nature of the game. So let's talk about this movement. I'm going to show you the movement here. Talk about a few of the specifications. Then we're going to talk about the accuracy, the power reserve, and the issue, the flaw of the movement. Bruce, does this have the hacking issue where when you pull the crown out to the last position, does the minute hand, does it jump? You know, is there is there a fatal flaw to this movement? We're going to talk about all of that. So starting with the starting with the specs here, this is the caliber 400, 120 hours of power reserve, anti magnetic to 2,250 Gauss, which is an absolutely crazy level, far more than what you will uh, encounter in everyday situations. But I love the fact that it is so anti magnetic. That is a feature that I value as a watch enthusiast and, and to see a brand when they develop a new movement, place emphasis in that, I think that's a really encouraging thing. So there are 30 different anti-magnetic components in this movement, including the escapement, which is fashioned out of silicon. The uh, hairspring is still an alloy, uh, but uh, you know the movement is anti-magnetic to that very high amount. We have twin barrel architecture where each one of the barrels can roughly hold two and a half days of power reserve, which is a lot. Uh, that's very respectable. And I think industry leading at this price, full retail price on this watch is $3,500. We have 21 joules, 28,800 beats per hour, or a four hertz frequency. And this watch is regulated in five different positions, which I think is great. It's actually a little bit tighter than COSC standards of accuracy. This is not a certified chronometer, but it is uh, accurate. Each one of the calipers, calibers, excuse me, is, is accurate to a window of minus three seconds to plus five seconds per day, which is just a little bit tighter than COSC standards. This carries the instantaneous date changeover feature at midnight. And uh, let me show you what I've gotten when it comes to accuracy with this watch. So I put it on and in the first 24 hours of wearing this watch, it deviated a rate of plus 3.5 seconds per day, which is nice. It's well within the specifications and it only got more accurate after that. So the more I wore this, the more it got uh, just a little bit more accurate, plus one second, plus one second on the fourth day. It was absolutely spot on. So I think Oris has done a great job of dialing this movement in and the uh, five position regulation. This is a breath of fresh air. I love Oris. I've loved the Orises that I've personally owned, but I've always been critical of their Salita calibers of, of how, how wide the acceptable daily deviation is. In fact, I'll throw in a picture here of, of what you find in an owner's manual. It is basically Seiko levels of, um, acceptable daily deviation. So the fact that this new in-house is so much more dialed in and that's being proved as I've, as I've worn this watch, I think that's great. Now you guys will notice a few, you know, a little bit on down the days of wearing and testing this watch, it started to get slow. And let me tell you what's going on there. Those were the days that this was being tested for power reserve. So it was sitting on my desk. I wound the movement and I did a time lapse of myself winding the crown because for this caliper, excuse me, caliber, I'm, I don't know why I'm having trouble with this word. I've said it, you know, 300 times in the past year. Uh, with this caliber, you have to wind it 210 full revolutions of the crown to get a full wind. 
of uh, you know the 120 hours of power reserve. So I went a little bit overboard. I did over 300 just to be safe. And then I set it down on the desk right in front of my gold-plated Seiko Quartz desk clock. I got some shots, some time-lapse shots of this uh, of this movement and it just sat on the desk dial up and i was testing the power reserve so it started to get a little bit slow i set it down saturday november 28th at 7 21 p.m so if it could go the full 120 hours it has to go to thursday december 3rd at 7 21 p.m and i'm happy to report that it not only met the uh, power reserve of 120 hours, but it went a little bit above and beyond. And it officially stopped Thursday, December 4th at 11, 10 p.m., which is 122 hours and 49 minutes past the date or the time that I set it down. So uh, that is really nice to see, actually. Now, you'll notice it's running a little bit slow. And it got slower the longer it was sitting dial up. That's normal. Watches are meant to be worn in multiple positions. That's, you know, where they're going to be accurate. That's, that's totally normal. It's not exclusive to Oris. And as the power reserve really got low, as it was on its last dregs of juice, it really slowed down. And so that's why we're seeing minus 14 seconds on that last day. Uh, it's because it was operating on a very low reserve. And so if you have this watch or you're contemplating purchasing this piece, I would recommend, you know, just wearing it regularly, maybe winding it 50 times every couple of days if you're not wearing it, just to make sure you have more than one day of power reserve left. In that way, it's going to be dialed in. It's going to be accurate. And I mean, that's just really nice as a watch enthusiast. So um, after that, you guys will see, um, actually on the picture, it will say December 2nd. I'm not BSing you here. I didn't adjust the date. I realized that we didn't have November 31. So that's why it says two instead of three. And uh, on the 16th day of testing, that's why we have an NA because it actually died halfway through the night and I had to sync it up in the morning. And after that, as you guys can see, it's been performing very well. So I'm impressed with the level of accuracy. I'm impressed with the power reserve and how it went a little bit above and beyond. And that is also pretty normal with movements. You know, if ETA says your movement will go 38 hours, it probably will go about 40. If Rolex says it'll go 48, you'll probably get 50 out of it. You know, manufacturers and brands, they are a little conservative of what they're promising so they can over deliver to a small degree. And, and that's present here with this Oris in-house uh, caliber 400. Now, let's get to the issue of the movement, probably what most of you are waiting for. Bruce, talk about the issue, the flaw, the fatal flaw of this movement. Let me explain it. Uh, if you unthread the crown and pull it out to the second position to hack the movement, occasionally, and not every time, but occasionally this will happen, the minute hand will move. It will jump as you hack the movement. And you know what? That is really annoying. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's a deal breaker for most. And I think most of you watching this video will agree with me. In fact, I kind of expect the comment section of this video to be an absolute crap show of negativity, of vitriol, and of complaining, moaning, and groaning. And you know what? I can't necessarily, you know, fault you if you're doing that because that is really disappointing. And you know what? You watching this video, myself, we are the most enthusiastic consumer base for this product, for Oris. We are, you know, the people that want Oris to succeed more than anybody else outside of perhaps ownership or people that work for this brand. We have an interest in Oris succeeding. And so the fact that occasionally there's an issue with the movement, that's almost, you know, offending us <laughs> to a degree. It's almost hurtful. And I think this watch will absolutely bomb with us watch collectors, us crazy watch enthusiasts. We're, we're going to consider this to be unforgivable, treacherous. We're not going to touch this movement with a 10 foot pole. You couldn't pay us to buy this movement. You know, I think that's going to happen. I And I think that's really sad because the watch is fantastic otherwise. So I talked to Oris about this. Let me tell you what they said. They said, this is just a quirk of having double barrel movement architecture. And the drawback of having the occasional jump or, or 
or hacking issue is outweighed by that 123 hours of power reserve. And so they don't consider it a flaw. We might be thinking here, hey, I hope Oris fixes this. I hope the next time they come out with this movement, it's going to be different. Honestly, I don't think it will be because, again, they don't consider it an issue. They just consider it a quirk or a byproduct of the movement architecture. And personally, I don't agree with that because I've experienced movements from other brands. I'm thinking of Omega specifically that have double barrel architecture. And you know what? They don't have that hacking issue. At least I've never experienced it. And I haven't heard of others experiencing that as well. So it's not specific to the type of architecture, but it does seem to be specific with this movement. Now, I've handled two different Oris Aquas movements with this in-house caliber. The first one was one lent in by Saltzman's Watches, the authorized dealer that I love working with in Rhode Island that sells Oris. And I did not have the issue with that watch. And I had it for several days. I hacked the movement multiple times, trying to see if it would happen on, on that watch. It didn't happen. I sent it back after I did my review. And then this one that Oris lent in, it didn't happen for the first three days. And I thought, maybe this really isn't very well, you know, very widespread. And then on the third day, as I was, you know, syncing the movement, testing the accuracy, the daily accuracy, I got it to happen. And the more I played with it, the more frequently it happened. And so um, let me tell you the remedy here. And Aura suggests, for those of you having this issue, and again, it doesn't happen with every movement. It does happen with some movements. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen from time to time. What they suggest you do is to give the crown a few turns back and forward, give it a little wiggle, and that way it gets the gears to get in alignment and synchronization so when you hack the movement, there is no jump. And so I tried that, and you know what? It works. It adds you know, an extra three seconds to the overall process of syncing the time. So in the grand scheme of things, is it a deal breaker? Is it unforgivable? No. Is it annoying? Heck yeah, it is so annoying. It's stupid, it's silly, but it, it's it's a little thing. And again, I think this watch is gonna do terrible with watch enthusiasts. It's not gonna sell well. To the general public, that's not gonna freak out over an occasional issue that is remedied by an extra three second process. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. So I wonder how well this watch will do because watch enthusiasts, we don't make up a huge portion of over, over, uh, excuse me, overall sales for Oris global sales. So I don't have confidence that it's going to be remedied in the future. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do. I don't know. But uh, that's just my no BS opinion and experience with a couple different calibers. Um, the Oris in-house 400 doesn't happen all the time. Occasionally happens. Is it annoying? You bet it is. Is it, you know, is it able to be rectified with, with a little wiggle? It is. Um, but should we have to do that? Should we have to do that when you're spending around $3,000 on a luxury Swiss watch? Honestly, probably not. In principle, probably not. So that's what I think about this watch. I might do one more video with this. I've, I've done a full review. I've done a comparison with the Omega Seamaster, which I think is <laughs> probably the best luxury watch that you can buy, entry-level luxury watch with some name cachet and prestige. And it's a better purchase, but it is also quite a bit more expensive. I'll link those videos in the description. This is my experience with the accuracy, with the power reserve, my opinion on the hacking issue. And what am I going to do personally? I know I've stated in my review that I really want this movement. Am I going to buy one? Um... I haven't figured it out. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. So this example, it's going to go back to Oris because you know what? Occasionally the issue happens and I don't like that. So uh, maybe I can find an example like the first one that I had that doesn't have the hacking issue and maybe I'll buy that. I don't know. I haven't figured it out. I'm still going through and arriving at my finite opinions, but I wanted to share with you my experiences, my thoughts, and hopefully you found this uh, helpful if you're shopping this watch and, uh, and informative as well. So please reach out with any questions. Maybe I didn't convey a point very clearly. I often speak too fast. My brain is going faster than my mouth is, and I, I mess up, and I, I, don't, I don't do a great job explaining myself. So please 
reach out. You can disagree with me. You can call me a snob. You can say, Bruce, you're spot on. I'm interested in conversing with you. Thanks for watching today. I really appreciate it. And uh, see you in the next one.